What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing the official van tour on our 2008 Sprinter conversion van. We chose to go with the 2008 over the other years because we wanted a newer body style from our current 2005 Dodge Sprinter and this was one of the last years they did before they switched to DEF. We are running Falcon Wild Peak AT3s. These tires are our go-to tires. We have them on our 05 Sprinter and they have gotten us through some crazy stuff in that van. This van not yet because this is our first trip out so we're still breaking them in but they are great all-around tires. They ride smooth on the highway. They ride great off-road. They are Awesome. Taking it up top, we are running Zamp Solar. We have three 100 watt panels that is run to our battery banks, which we'll go into a little bit more in detail later. I almost forgot to mention, this actually was a contractor van. The whole thing was white, but we decided to go the whole nine yards with this one and give it a full legit paint job. We took it to a paint booth. That was a whole mission in itself. Thing barely fit in there. We got paint all over the place. It was a disaster, but it came out really freaking nice. The other thing we did on the outside is we did the Mercedes Benz conversion kit on the grill, and it looks freaking killer. Last thing that we added was a light bar. They not only give it that aggressive feel, but they also just actually legitimately help you out when you're in a really dark area, which is always possible when you're off-roading and sprinters and stuff like that. All right, let's take it inside. We have an insulated blackout curtain to separate our cab from our living area. And then we went ahead and installed little magnets inside of the curtains. So that way it stays stuck together. And then this is just our cab area. Nothing too crazy here. It is just a standard 2008 cab. We did switch out the radio for a double din and wired it to our reverse camera. Just to have a little bit better of a picture. And we also did the Malone stage one tune just to give it a little oomph. We also installed a diesel heater in this van. It's just called an eBay diesel heater, but it's commonly referred to as the Chinese diesel heater. It's super cheap. It costs like 150 bucks to install. We have it run on a breaker, so that's why our screen's not on right now. And we also installed this little extra switch just so we can have two off points. But it's ran right here into the cab under the passenger seat. It was not that difficult to install. Again, we'll have links to everything that we built out in the description for you guys to check out. For the base of the build, we first laid down kill mat for sound editing, and then for insulation, we went with Havelock wool. This was actually our first time using Havelock wool, and it was super easy to work with. If you check out their website, they actually have a calculator, so depending on your build size and everything like that, you can know exactly how many bags you need for your build. We ended up using two bags, and we're able to get it to work for our roof our sidewalls and actually our floor. We went a little bit light in some places, but it wasn't that big of a deal for us. Obviously your idea may be different, so definitely check out their site. My favorite part of the van has to be the ceiling. The ceiling was a bit of a joint idea for us. I really liked Herringbone and Jason wanted to do the slated new ceiling. So then we were kind of like, wait, what if we just combine the two and we have a Herringbone slated ceiling? And this was the result. It was a bit tricky to figure out, but once we got everything working and got our spacing right, it came together really nice. It is a bit heavier than we anticipated, but I think the looks and the uniqueness of it kind of outweigh those cons, in my personal opinion. Anyway, cut into the roof, we have two max air fans. We have a deluxe fan in the back over the bed, and then we have a 4000 in the front in the kitchenette loungy lounge area. We usually end up putting these on opposite cycles, meaning this one over here will suck out while the one over the bed will push in so we can create a nice circle of flow and really get the air pumping in here. We installed 11 LED puck lights into this van. We have seven into the actual roof panels, and then we decided to put two over the bench area and two under this little nook area over here. And then those are all split up into two wiring setups. Over here, we have our switch panel, our inverter switch, and another 110 outlet. These are our two dimmable lights. 
This one's for the back set. And then we split it so that this one was for the front four over the kitchenette area, as well as the two that are under each of these setups here. So they got a couple different settings and you could just cycle through them depending on the lighting that you want. This one right here is our water heater, which needs the inverter on in order to turn on. And then you get this during van tour. Hey guys, how's it going? Is it for sale? For sale? Nah, not yet. <laughs> we went with a water pump on this van. So I'm trying to get it to turn on, but it's not gonna turn on of course, because we're filming. But anyway, we went with a water pump on this van rather than a pump faucet. So far, we really like it. We've used a little bit more water, but we also put a 33 gallon tank in. So it's a big difference compared to the five gallon that we were running in our other van. So down for the plumbing, what we did is we made this a removable piece. So if for some reason we did have to put a bunch of stuff in here or something larger, or we wanted to work on the plumbing, we had access to do it by just simply taking this out. We do not run a gray tank anymore. We just use biodegradable soap. And if we are in an area where we cannot let our water go down or something, we either just don't use our water there, or we have this lever down here where we could simply shut it off. And that way it will fill up the whole tube if it's something, you know, that we need to do. And then that way, when we get somewhere that we can open it up, we'll just switch the knob and let the water come out. All of our hinges are soft close. So they go like that. We added an LED strip around the lip of the countertop just to give us that nice little extra glow at night. And it's also on a two-way switch. So if we turn it on over here at the entrance of the door, we can leave it on and I could actually turn it off from bed. In the rest of the kitchen, we decided to go with three drawers with these black handles. And they're a little tough to pull out because in the back of them, we added locking clips. So usually we see them in the front here or something and we didn't really see a good point to put them. So we decided to give ourselves a little bit of headache and said, well, what if we hide them in the back? That's exactly what we did. It was a, uh, a bit of a challenge to say the least, but we figured it out and it works really good. So these are our, uh, our drawers. We got our silverwares and stuff like that on top. And then you give it a nice little snug pull in and it stays in there locked. We haven't had any issues with our cabinets opening, our drawers, nothing. Like the, the, the locking clips have all worked really, really good. Counter space is a big thing for us, more so Jason, because I don't really do much of the cooking around here, but we knew that this little bit was not going to be enough. So we decided to add this flip up counter to optimize our space. And this is actually where our burner goes as well. Instead of doing a built in stove top, we like, again, the ability to have so much counter space. So we tend to lean towards the portable stove top and we just do that and open this up like this and run the propane. And this is where we cook. We'll close this guy up and then he just gets stored right behind the seat. Like so. All of this counter is butcher block and we did a custom stain on it. We actually ran out of butcher block between cutting all of this as well as this panel over the fridge. So we just got a little piece of teak and stained it in the same color. And it kind of matched pretty good actually. We decided to add these little cubbies last minute. We actually didn't have them for the majority of the build and it was just the cutout. And then we were like, it looks a little bit empty. We kind of got to put something here. So we made these cute little shelves, add some plants because you know, you could always use some plants and some greenery in your house. And then the bottom one's kind of just like, a little nook for books or I don't know, anything else you want to put in there. We usually see a lot of campers when they do the extended kitchenette, they kind of just block off this whole area or have the, or have the base of it come out and cover the step. However, we noticed that if we were to do it that route, we would not be able to take out this step here. And we have done it in the past and we will most likely do it again. Sometimes you gotta clean out the track. If the slider breaks, you have to take it out for that. It gets really gross under there from long-term travel so it's not something that we wanted to block off like what are we going to do take the whole kitchen apart you know so we decided to cut it to the shelving so that way we would have full access if we needed to remove it and we also made sure that we put this bottom shelf high enough so it also wouldn't interfere with it we decided to go with a under the counter sink it was a little bit more of a challenge than our other one, but we think it came out really nice. We went with all black appliances, black magnetic knives, the spice racks that are magnetic, just making everything a bit more clean and luxurious looking, I guess. The end of this faucet actually unscrews and then our shower head with a hose actually screws directly into it and comes over here and hangs under our DIY shower setup, which goes a little bit like this. 
We open this guy up. This is a big kiddie pool. And this thing goes in there. So that you don't got to uh, stand in your own water. Male to male barb that goes in to the, the uh, faucet as well as the hose for the shower head. We have these little hooks here. They're just like a uh, quick release. And this goes into the little pipe. So this is the big hula hoop shower. And it's two shower curtains with four poly pipes that we attach together. The only way was we had to little rig a little thing to hold this up. Right on top of the little thingy thing thing. We still need to get the right hook for this. We just didn't have it on this trip, so we just did this. But uh, yeah, ideally there will be an actual something, not a string to hold this. And then we'll be good. There's your fully enclosed shower. A big part of this build was adding this bench table area. Uh, I usually do a lot of laptop work while I'm on the road and in our other van we did not have a setup like this and I always had to work in bed which was really uncomfortable for me. So we set this up to be able to not only work but also just eat a meal or drink a cup of coffee and look out at the mountain views like this. I'm really happy with how it came out. This is a CRL window that we installed and then we made a custom frame around it just so we didn't have like all of the metal showing. Travel vibes when you're when you're like 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 look at it, you know what I mean? I don't know. I like it. Under both of these benches it's actually storage. This will just lift up. We keep our shower stuff under that one and then this one's just for whatever. We haven't filled it up yet, but it's actually big enough to fit a specific composting toilet that we found online. We were gonna go with it, but we just haven't yet. But if we wanted to, it fits in there perfectly. This little nook right here, I freaking love this thing. I don't know why, it's just super cute. I, I just like it. It's great for putting extra stuff. It's great for putting, you know, coffee pots. It's good for putting laptops. It's good for putting drones to charge wine if you're a wine drinker beer drinker i don't know it's just a great little spot we built this top to go around our isotherm cruise elegance 130 fridge this thing is sweet we literally fit a bunch of stuff i gotta close it now jason's gonna yell it but it's awesome blacked out look we made sure to have the proper spacing for the venting and there's venting on the side as well both sides actually there's venting when we put the fridge here we were like well we don't want to waste all this space on top of it so why don't we just use the leftover piece of butcher block and build a nice little area here which is exactly what we did and then we put the lights up here on top of those cabinets and worked out great with our overhead cabinetry we decided the more storage the better jason actually wanted to bring these cabinets all the way out here to the entrance of the door but i said no way because it was just going to be too closed off so we went with cabinets all the way on one side and then only halfway on the other side all of them have shocks and we kind of put like, I don't know, chips and cookies and stuff over here. And this is our pantry. All of our wiring is ran through the conduit. We adjusted all the springs to make sure that the handles obviously didn't hit the uh, ceiling. So that's why they're not like flat, but they are open all the way. And then we just put them down and they are soft close. Inset cabinets here just to kind of, I guess, change things up a bit and just give it a little bit more variation. I like it. I think it, it I don't know, it gives it a cool feel to it. But in here, basically, we have just more kitchen stuff, some baggies, cups, plates, bowls, classic guac bowl, you know? Um, yeah, just just the, uh, just the essentials. Our entire bedding setup is Layla Sleep. We have awesome honeycomb pillows. The entire mattress is actually honeycomb as well, and it's a dual sided. So depending on how you like to sleep, there is a soft and a firm side, and you could do it like that. We keep it on the firm side just because, I don't know, we keep it on the firm side, but we left spacing on both sides. So that way you can either put, you know, like your books, your night stuff, your computers, if you want to store any extra blankets or whatever, you just each have some space to do that. And we also installed two CRL windows on the back each each side there and then we have this other little area right here which it was just extra space but it's a great spot for like book bags camera gear hiking stuff you could even put shoes in there it's just like a nice little sore away spot but i think that does it for inside let's check out the garage and the electrical setup so 
So this is our garage. It's currently very messy because like I said, we're on our first trip and you know, we forgot how to do this a little bit, but our electrical system is all to the left and our plumbing system is all to the right. We have two Dakota lithium 100 amp hour batteries. This is what is holding the charge from our ZAMP solar panels. Our 100 watt panels collect the solar. It runs through our solar charge controller and then it goes into our Dakota lithium battery banks. These have been working great for us so far. We have a 2000 watt Renogy inverter, short power over there if we ever wanted to plug in somewhere, a DC to DC charger because you have to get that with lithium if you wanna do the alternator charging, which we ran and have a switch at the front to be able to do that if our batteries are running low. Here we have a smart shunt, which all of our negatives run to, and then our one negative runs to the battery bank. We also have the app so that way we can monitor all our levels on our phones. Instead of fuses, we decided to go with breakers. It worked for us in our last van. So we have all of our breakers there. We have our fans, our lights, our fridge, our water pump, our uh, solar in, our engine in. We have a couple, we have uh, one spare and uh, our 12 volts and LEDs and our water heater. That's pretty much it for the electrical. We did a nice little LED strip underneath. On this side, we added a little fill hose box so that way we don't have to stick the hose all the way down there to our 33 gallon tank. Here is our water heater. Then over there we have our water pump ran through the accumulator and then they have the silencing hoses and then it goes through the whole, the whole system. It looks like a bunch of wires and hose, but it's just the water pump, the accumulator and the water heater and then the PEX piping with the silencing hoses and the water tank and yada, yada, yada. So that about completes the entire van tour of our 2008 Sprinter conversion van. We actually did this entire build out on YouTube. I'll put links to all the different videos down below. So in case a specific thing interests you, you guys can check that out. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Got new van content, new all kinds of content every single week. Make sure you guys are here for it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Let us know down below your favorite part or what you would do different or if you've tried something. Whatever, just drop a comment down below and let us know. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.